hi students so welcome you all again in this session i am going to start your relations and functions topic in this your cet sessions clear so first we shall go through the synopsis for your exams that means synopsis of your relations and functions for the exams of iit je kcet and nda exams and various competitive exams okay so first we shall start with the definition of relation clear okay so first let us see the definition of relation in this definition of relation what they are going to tell us let us see a relation or from non empty set x to non empty set y denoted by r such that x to y is a correspondence between set x to set y by which one or more elements of x are associated with one or more elements of y therefore a relation r from a non empty set x to another non empty set y is a subset of x cross y that is r such that x to y is nothing but subset of a cross b clear so let us see what they have explained here there are two sets x and y both the sets are non empty that means both set contains minimum one element in each of them clear set x also contain minimum one element set y also contain minimum one element because if they are non empty means the meaning of non empty is both the set contains minimum one element in that set maximum there is uh, sorry maximum these two sets can have as many as elements they can possible okay so but the very important thing is set x and set y has to be non empty clear next relation means r is relation if it is an a subset of x cross y this is very very important this is very very important that is what they are explaining in this particular definition okay in this particular definition they are explaining nothing but r is a subset of x cross y r is subset of x cross y and this x cross y is cartesian product this x cross y is cartesian product clear so you have to understand that what is cartesian product this is also very important what is cartesian product this is also very very important clear for that what we shall do see here we take two sets x has 1 comma 2 y has a comma b clear now if i am writing the cartesian product x cross y that will be equal to see one corresponds to a and one corresponds to b that is nothing but 1 comma a 1 comma b next two corresponds to a two corresponds to b that is written as 2 comma a and 2 comma b so this is the cartesian product for set x and set y clear now if i write any subset see here r1 i will write as 1 comma a 2 comma a so now r1 is relation r1 is relation because 
R1 is subset of x cross y. Suppose if I write R2 as, see here, R2 equal to set of a comma 1, 2 comma a. See this, second one is very very important. I am writing the first element as a comma 1, second element as 2 comma a. Now R2 is not relation, R2 is not relation. Why? Because order pair a comma 1 is not present in x cross y. Order pair a comma 1 is not present in x cross y. Hence we say that R2 is not relation. R2 is not relation. But R1 is relation. See here. But R1 is relation because R1 is subset of x cross y. Okay. So from this all what we understand relation is nothing but it's an, a subset of x cross y where x cross y is an Cartesian product. Clear students? So here they are also telling that the correspondence between set x to set y by which one or more elements of x are associated with one or more elements of y. That's what we are writing here. One or more elements of set x are related to one or more elements of set y. Okay. So that is what written here. If you draw in a Venn diagram, it will be like this. 1, 2, A, B. This is set X. This is set Y. 1 is related with A. 1 is related with B. 2 is related with A. 2 is related with B. So this is the mapping or this is arrow diagram. Arrow diagram. Clear? This is what written in the x cross y. This is what written in the x cross y. R1 is relation such that 1 comma a and 2 comma a are the elements in R1. So that's why R1 is in a subset of x cross y. Therefore, R1 is relation. But in R2, we have a comma 1. See here, in R2, we have a comma 1 which is not in x cross y that's why r2 that's why r2 is not relation that's why conclusion is r2 is not relation clear students so this is very very important so what is your conclusion here r is a relation from set x to set y if r is in a subset of x cross y if r is in a subset of x cross y where x cross y is cartesian product clear so this is what the conclusion of the complete definition of relations in this particular slide clear so now next let us go for the next slide okay here they have given you one of the example for relation okay so the example for the relation is consider a set x and set y as set of all male members and all female members respectively of a royal family of the kingdom Ayodhya. Clear? So in the set X, there are male members. In the set Y, there are female members. They are building in a relation between set X to set Y. Okay? How they are building? See, first they have taken, first they have taken Dasharath. Dasharath is related to three people. That is Kausalya, Sumitra and Kaike. Okay. Ram is related with Sita. Lakshman is related with Urmila. Shatrugna is related with 
ಶ್ರುತಕೀರ್ತಿ ಓಕೆ ಭರತ ಈಸ್ ರಿಲೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಮಾಂಡವಿ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದೆ ಆರ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಆಸ್ ದೆ ಆರ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಬಿಟ್ವೀನ್ ದ ಮೇಲ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಯೋಧ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಫೀಮೇಲ್ ಮೆಂಬರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಯೋಧ್ಯ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವೈಫ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ದೇ ಆರ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಸಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ದಶರಥ ಕೌಸಲ್ಯ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ದಶರಥ ಕೌಸಲ್ಯ ದೇ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಒನ್ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ರಾಮ್ ಸೀತಾ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ಭರತ ಮಾಂಡವಿ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ಲಕ್ಷ್ಮಣ ಉರ್ಮಿಳ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ಶತ್ರುಘ್ನ ಶ್ರುತಕೀರ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ದಶರಥ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕೈಕೆ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ತ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ದಶರಥ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸುಮಿತ್ರ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸೆವೆಂತ್ ಆರ್ಡರ್ ಪೇರ್ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಆರ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ದ ಎಲಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ X is husband of element in Y. Element in Y. In this way, they are defining the relation. Clear? In the set X, in the set X, see here. In the set X, they have taken all the male members of the set X. in the set y they have taken all the female members and they are defining a relation as see here and a relation r is defined as was husband of from set x to set y was husband of means dasharatha was husband of kausalya sumitra and kaike Ram was the husband of Sita, Bharata was the husband of Mandavi, Lakshman was the husband of Urumila, Chatrugna was the husband of Shrutakirti. So that is related, sorry, that is written in R. That is related in, sorry, that is written in R and this is the relation which they have written for an example. In the previously we have taken set X as 1,2, set Y as 1,2. a comma b and we have built the relation between r1 sorry we have written the r1 as the relation 1 comma a 1 comma b sorry 2 comma a clear so this was the relation but r2 was not our relation because it was a comma 1 and here it was 2 comma a because a comma 1 was not present in x cross y clear so this ex- this simple example we have taken and we have studied in the previous slide and here in this slide they have given the one of the good example that is uh, relation between the male members of ayodhya and the female members of ayodhya okay so i think this is very much clear to you all of writing an example in the form of order pair now i will go to the next slide okay so using the example of previously written or previously studied in the previous slide see here domain and co domain very very important domain and co domain with range okay so domain of the relation or such that x to y is a set of elements of the first set x which are participating in the correspondence that is it is the set of all pre images under the relation r clear okay domain of r previously uh, they have taken one example in that all members were in the first set so all the elements of the first set will be your domain that means there will be two sets set x and set y so the set x is called domain the set x is called domain clear 
every element of x should be present so that set x is called domain clear now codomain see codomain range of the relation r x to y is the set y that is kausalya kaike sumitra sita mandavi urumila shrutakirti is codomain of r previously all the elements of female ele female members were in y therefore all the female members were present in the relation hence all the elements of this set y is called codomain okay so range range of the relation r x to y is a set of those elements of set y which are participating in the correspondence that is set of all images range of r is kausalya kaike sumitra sita mandavi urumila urumila and shrutakirti clear so all the elements of set y will be the range in the previous example all the elements of set x will be the domain all the elements of the set x will be the domain clear students so from this what we understand see here in the previous example all the male members were present in the set x all the female members were present in the set y that's why what we called the male member set was domain the female member set was codomain as well as range codomain as well as range clear so that example is very much clear no problem but we also see the other example for more understanding other example for more understanding what i will write set x equal to 1 2 3 set y equal to a comma b now see here x cross y is the cartesian product how you are going to write your cartesian product 1 comma a 1 comma b 2 comma a 2 comma b 3 comma a 3 comma b so this is your cartesian product clear now i will write r1 r1 as 1 comma a 1 comma b 2 comma a 3 comma b so this is my r1 all the elements of r1 all the elements of r1 are present in x cross y therefore r1 is subset of x cross y hence r1 is relation no problem here what happens i am studying about domain codomain and range if i write domain if i write domain of this r1 it will be 1 2 3 okay if i write codomain if i write codomain it will be see here second elements a b so this is a comma b and range range is nothing but the elements of second uh, sorry the elements of order pair which are in second place that is again a comma b clear so the collection of first elements the collection of first elements is called domain and the collection of second elements is called range the collection of second elements is called range anyways you have a comma b this is codomain x is domain all the elements 1 2 3 are present in r1 so that's why this is domain this is codomain and this is range i will slightly change this what i will do i will write r2 as c 1 uh, i will write 
टू कॉमा ए वन कॉमा ए ओके सो नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो द सबसेट ऑफ आर क्रॉस वाई दिस इज ऑल्सो सबसेट ऑफ आर क्रॉस वाई नाउ सी वॉट इज डोमेन एंड वॉट इज रेंज वॉट इज डोमेन वॉट इज रेंज ओके नाउ हियर देर इज अ कंफ्यूजन सी इन द सेट एक्स देर आर थ्री एलिमेंट्स इन द सेट वाई देर आर टू एलिमेंट्स नो प्रॉब्लम दिस इज ऑल्सो रिलेशन बिकॉज इट इज एन सबसेट ऑफ आर क्रॉस वाई दट इज ऑल्सो नो प्रॉब्लम बट यू हैव टू राइट डोमेन नाउ यू हैव टू राइट डोमेन एंड रेंज यू हैव टू राइट द डोमेन एंड रेंज क्लियर सो क्लियरली अंडरस्टैंड द डेफिनेशन ऑफ डोमेन the domain of the relation r such that x to y is the set of elements of first set x which are participating in the correspondence which are pa participating in the correspondence that is it is set of all pre images under relation that means the collection of first element is called a domain so domain d is equal to only 1 comma 2 the domain d is equal to 1 comma 2 clear next range range is set of set of those elements those elements of set y which are participating in the correspondence that means in this relation which element is participating only one element is participating that is the range that is only a okay and codomain codomain is your set of a comma b codomain is your set of a comma b but domain is only 1 comma 2 range is only single element a Are you getting my point? Because the collection of first element is called domain, the collection of second element is called range, and the set Y is called codomain. Please remember this very very important. Domain means see this. Domain means collection of collection of first element first element in order pairs in order pairs see this 2 and 1 are the elements of domain next range means the elements that are in the second place the element that are in the second place is called range codomain means your set y itself is your codomain clear students i think from this example you have understood uh, what is domain what is codomain and what is range clear so let us move for the next slide okay so here they are making some note here they are making some note that is if a is related to b then symbolically it is written as a or b where where a is called pre image of b and b is image of a that means suppose in the relation r1 we had 1 comma a 1 comma b 2 comma a let us consider this is one relation here one is related with a that is written as 1 r a here one is related with b it is written as 1 r b here two is related to a it is written as 2 r a like this the elements are written if one is related to a if 2 is related to a if 1 is related to b clear here one is called pre image of a one is called 
pre image of a 2 is uh, sorry a is called image of 1 a is called image of 1 and 1 is called pre image of a see here 2 is pre image of a a is image of 2 clear this all are the basic things no problem if possible you remember it otherwise as you go on solving the problem it will be uh, very easy to you all next if a is not related to b then symbolically it is written as a r a r with one slash b if a is not related to b if a is not related to b it is written as a r slash b clear okay next if n of a equal to m n of b equal to n then number of elements in a cross b is m into n okay if you see in the previous slide x has three elements y has two elements see n of x is 3 n of y is 2 therefore x cross y that means n of x cross y is equal to 3 into 2 that is 6 that means here there will be in the element of x cross y see this in the element of x cross y you are going to have 6 elements you are going to have 6 elements 1 2 3 4 5 and this is 6 clear that is what they have given in this particular third point okay a has if a has m elements if b has n elements n of a cross b will be m into n if set a has three elements that is n of a is 3 n of b is 2 then n of a cross b will be 6 n of a cross b will be 6 clear okay now let us go for the fourth one since a cross b contains all such order pairs of the type a comma b such that a belongs to a and b belongs to b that means it includes all possibilities all possibilities in which the elements of set a can be related with elements of set b therefore a cross b is termed as the largest possible relation defined from set a to set b also known as universal relation from a to b so they are simply telling that your cartesian product that is x cross y is universal relation see this it's an a universal relation because it contains all the order pairs it contains all the order pairs so that why it's called as universal relation cartesian product itself is also in a relation that is universal universal relation okay because cartesian product will contain all the order pairs which are possible from x to y Okay, no problem. Let us go for the fifth one. If in relation R to Y, Y equal to X, then the relation can be written as R such that X to X or R on X. That means very simple. See here. The fifth one, it says that suppose x is equal to set of 1 comma 2 y is equal to set of again 1 comma 2 it can be written as r is related to x to x because see here x and y are equal sets x is equal to y 
x is equal to y that's why we can write it as r from x to x r from x to x in the place of r from in the place of r from x to y we can write it as r from x to x these are all very simple note no problem but here the very very important note is third one this is important very very important that is n of a has n elements n of b has sorry n of a has m elements n of b has n elements then the number of elements in the a cross b are m into n this is very very important clear students therefore cartesian product is one more fourth one is what universal relation cartesian product itself is called as universal relation so third and fourth are going to be very very important so please remember them cartesian product itself is called as universal relation and third one is if n of a has m elements n of b has n elements n of a cross b will be containing m into n elements clear students we shall go for the next slide okay so in this they are explaining function in this they are explaining function let us look at it let a and b p two given sets and if each element of each element a belongs to a is associated with an unique element b belongs to b under a rule f then this relation is called function okay so that means see here students i will consider this is set a i will consider this is set b here i will have some 1 2 3 4 here here i will have a b c d so now i will make one relation i will make one relation from a to b one relates to a two relates to c three relates to b and four relates to d so this is my relation one next i will write r2 same again with the same elements 1 2 3 4 a b c d one relates to b two relates to a two relates to c three relates to d four relates to c i will write r3 1 2 3 a b c d here one relates to c c and 3 relates to c 2 relates to c 4 relates to b r4 1 2 3 a b c d <coughs> two relates to b three relates to c four relates to a and i will add one more element here five five relates to d clear okay see now what i will say r1 relation is function R1 relation is function. R2 relation is not function. R2 relation is not function. R3 relation is function. R4 relation is not function. Okay. now i have to give the reasons now i have to give 
reasons for why r1 is function for why r2 is not function for why r3 is not function and for why r4 is not function so for that students you have to understand the definition of functions very very carefully clear what they tells a and b be the two given sets and if each element of if each element a belongs to a is associated with unique element this is very very important unique element b belongs to b under a rule f then this relation is called function okay so now i have taken this relations i have taken some relations r1 r2 r3 and r4 so from r1 r2 r3 and r4 some are function and some are not function clear see here one has unique image two has unique image three has unique image four has unique image that means all the elements of domain now this is called domain now all the elements of this domain or the set a if you don't set domain you can call it as set a all the elements of set a are related in unique way all the elements of uh, set a are related in unique way that's why r1 is function that's why r1 is function clear see because one has unique image two has unique image three has unique image four has unique image if you write it it will be 1 comma a 2 comma b sorry 2 comma c uh, 3 comma b 4 comma d clear 1 2 3 4 see all the elements are having unique images so now r1 is function why r2 is not function now you can see one has unique image three has unique image four has unique image but two have not unique image because two is related to a as well as c two is related to a as well as c because two is not having unique image r2 is not function are you getting my point two is reason is what two relates to two elements that is two comma a and two comma c two has two different images that means two is not having unique image two is not having two is not having unique image two is not having unique image that's why r2 is not function that's why r2 is not function now go for r3 if you go for r3 one has unique image two has unique image three has unique image four has unique image no problem all the elements are having unique image and r3 is called function because all the elements of r3 are having unique images so now no clear therefore r3 is function go for r4 2 has unique image 3 has unique image 4 has unique image 5 has unique image these four elements have unique image but one is not having any image one is not having any image that's why this is called not function please remember very very important because definition tells that see this each see this each each means what every every element of set a every element of set a that is nothing but the meaning of each are you getting my point each element of a must have unique image but in the set a we have one which is not having any image it is not having unique image it's not having uh, any image that's why it is called as not function but here 
see a is not having any pre image pre image d is not having any pre image there is no problem there is no problem with the elements of set b but if this type of elements this type of elements without any image are present in set a means that will create a problem that will create a problem and it is not going to be an a function that's why r4 is not function r4 is not function but r3 is function don't worry about the elements in set b we have to concentrate on the elements in set a please remember this we have to concentrate on the elements in set a because if r has to be relation sorry if r has to be function that means if relation has to be function if relation has to be function every element of set a every element of set a must have unique image must have unique image then only we can say that that particular relation is function see here r3 is function but r4 is not function because of one here r1 is function because all the elements are having unique image r2 is not function because of element 2 it has two different images that's why it is not function next r3 is function r4 is not function because of this one because it doesn't have any image clear students so these all things are very very important because by reading or by hearting the definition this simple two and half lines are having this much of information see this all information is hidden this all information is hidden in this two and half lines that two in two words one is each one is each another one is unique see this unique these two words make us to understand this many of things are you clear students so that's why what i am telling please understand the concept by bahating the concept you are not going to solve the problem now if you try to solve the problems it will be very easy because now you know the concept before knowing the concept please don't try to uh, go for problems by bahating the definition or by bahating the concepts you can't solve any problem you have to understand it you have to understand it then you have to go for the problems are you getting my point so now let us see the next slide okay so now next we are going for representation of function next we are going for representation of function that is there are three types of representations first one is mapping second one is algebraic method and third one is order pairs so mapping means see here this is one way that is called mapping already we know because in the previous problems we have used this is called mapping mapping like this that means like this we can represent the function next algebraic see here this is called algebraic method that means in the form of f of x equal to y x square is algebraic term in that way we are going to represent it this is the graph of x, x square these are the some examples of x and f of x so if we represent it like this it is called as algebraic method if we represent by this diagram it is called mapping method and the third one is order pairs this also we have already seen that is order pairs a comma b b comma c c comma d d comma e e comma a it are they are written in the form of order pairs like this a comma b b comma c c comma d 
if if these things are written in the form of order pairs it is called in the form of order pairs that means in three ways we are representing in three ways we are representing that is one is mapping another one is algebraic another one is algebraic method third one is order pair this all things we have already used so let us don't waste time here so let us go for the next slide okay that's what they are explaining here mapping mapping means a is related to p b is related to q c is related to r this simple thing is going to be explained okay here a is related to p b is related to q c is related to r a is related to w b is related to x c is related to y d is related to y next in the third one a is related to 1 b is related to m c is related to n c is related to o a is related to u b is not related to any element c is related to w so now from this four now from this four you try to make which of these four are function and which is not function check f1 is function or not f2 is function or not f3 is function or not f4 is function or not already i explained when the relation is going to be function so you check f1 is function or not f2 is function or not f3 is function or not f4 is function or not by answering this you go on reading this so that your answer is present in this particular a uh, theoretical form in this three definitions the answer of that is present for my question so you take this as homework so you take this as homework and you solve it clear answer is al already present here but no problem before you reading that you what you do you do this homework which of this f1 f2 f3 f4 are function or not check f1 is function or not f2 is function or not f3 is function or not f4 is function or not reason is already explained here by answering this you go through this particular definitions so you will be very much clear about your concept i will go to the next slide okay students so already we have seen algebraic method algebraic method they have explained in detail algebraic method means it shows the relation between the elements of two sets in the form of two variables x and y where x is independent variable and y is dependent variable so they have given one example set a set b they have defined f from a to b so here related with one is cr one is related with 5 2 is related with 7 3 is related with 9 so it is written in the form of algebraic form it is written in the form of it is written in the form of algebraic form so that you can uh, understand it okay so let us solve this example in detail see algebraic method means what they are going to do they are going to write it in the form of f of x equal to y they are going to write it in the form of f of x equal to y where we have they have given one example that is f of x equal to 2x plus 3 this 2x plus 3 is nothing but y okay here x is independent y is dependent why x is independent because x can be taking any value from this set a see 
a is given as set of 1 2 3 b is given as set of 5 7 9 okay so this x can take or this x has an independency of choosing any element from a x has an independence independence of choosing any element from set a i can take 1 that means f of 1 i will write it as 2 into 1 plus 3 that means x value is 1 so it will be how much 5 so this 5 is depending on this 1 unless and until you put 1 here you are not going to get 5 are you getting my point so 1 is uh, just because of x so x is independent y is dependent on this x term how this x term is going to change like that this y is going to change now i can take 2 so 2 times of 2 plus 3 it will be equal to 7 now i will take 3 it will be equal to 2 times of 3 plus 3 it is going to be 9 okay so 1 is related to 5 2 is related to 7 3 is related to 9 5 is uh, depending on 1 7 is depending on 2 9 is depending on 3 here 1 2 3 are independent elements but 5 7 9 are dependent elements because if you put 1 you will get 5 if you put other element you are not going to get 5 so 5 depends on 1 5 depends on 1 7 depends on 2 9 depends on 3 that means y is dependent element on x y is dependent element on x and x is independent of y x is independent of y there is no rule that you have to take only one or only two i can take anything i can take one i can take two i can take three so the output depends on the input the output depends on the input that's why y is dependent x is independent clear students so this is how we are going to write our algebraic method next order pair we have already discussed so no problem order pair means we are going to write it in the form of order pairs so a first element will be from set a second element will be from set b so for that there are no uh, more explanations because it's a very easy see here if i take a as a set b as set of b i will write one order pair a comma b see here they have written one order pair a comma b first element will be from the first set second element will be from the second set that's all that's what they are explaining here that's what they have explained in this order pairs form form of order pairs form of order pair means order pairs are going to be constructed by using the cartesian product so first element will be from the first set and the second element will be from the second set that's all see a is a is an element of set a that is first set b is an element of b that's second set so two order pairs should not have the same first element that means if two order pairs have the same element then it's not going to be function because that's not going to have an unique image previously we have discussed previously we have discussed in the r1 r1 r2 r3 and r4 section you go through the r4 because of that r4 sorry because of r2 you go to r2 in r2 element 2 was having two images element 2 was written two times in the order pair that's why this was not function so that's what they are saying here two order pairs two order pairs should not have the same first element that's what they are explaining here that's all so first element will be from the first set second element will be from the second set so two order pairs will not have the same first element that's what they are telling 
क्लियर ओके सो इन द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड वी शाल कंटिन्यू विथ टेस्टिंग ऑफ फंक्शन हाउ टू टेस्ट द गिवन रिलेशन इज फंक्शन और नॉट ओके so testing of function very easy what we have to do you have to draw the given function in the form of graphical way in the form of graphical way clear x is domain y is codomain please understand this x is domain y is codomain if i take one point p1 here it is related to point a it is related to point b what is x it is domain what is y it is codomain so if i write now it will be in the form of p1 comma a p1 comma b that means p1 is related to two elements a and b hence this particular relation is not going to be function so it is not function are you clear that means very simple way what we say if i draw a parallel line to y axis if i draw a parallel line to y axis like this it must not intersect in more than one point it must not intersect in more than one point see here they have drawn a parallel line they have drawn a parallel line to y axis and it is intersecting in two different points therefore this is not function therefore this is not function simple trick means see i will write here draw parallel line draw parallel line to y axis if it intersects if it intersects in more than one point more than one point it is not function this is graphical testing or uh, geometrical testing it's called as geometrical testing clear so vertical line test what we call it as we call it as see here they have given it is called as vertical line test this is the shortcut to identify the function is the given function is uh, sorry the given relation is function or not that is vertical line test you just draw you just draw a parallel line you just draw a parallel line to y axis if it intersects in more than one point then it is not going to be an a function clear see clearly clearly your first diagram is not function your second diagram is also not function third diagram is function fourth diagram is function this is function this is function this is not function and this is not function see here this is also not function because they are intersecting in more than one point it is intersecting in the second diagram is intersecting in four points 1 2 3 4 this is in first diagram is intersecting in two points 1 and 2 so that's why it's not function clear the third diagram intersects only in one point so it is function the fourth diagram intersects only in one point therefore it is function clear students so this is called your vertical line test vertical line test very simple so you remember this that's all we have to draw a parallel line to y axis if it intersect at 
more than one point then it is not going to be function clear students so i end this session at this point and i continue in the next set in the next session from the next slide